Hello, everybody. This is just a quick review of Preludes by T.S. Eliot. Okay, so the first stanza, the winter evening settles down with smells of steaks and passageways. Six o'clock, the burnt out ends of smoky days. And now a gusty shower wraps the grimy scraps of withered leaves about your feet and newspapers from vacant lots the showers beat on broken blinds and chimney pots. and the corner of the street, a lonely cab horse steams and stamps, and then lighting, the lighting of the lamps. Okay, so in this first section, the prelude, which is music before the main selection, um, in this case, he's referring to preludes of all kinds, the period before something major happening. The first prelude of the poem is set on a winter evening in a city at a time of day when people are returning home from work during a rainstorm. It's dirty, pungent. It's a lonely, urban place. Motifs are introduced that will continue throughout the poem, like time, light, newspapers, and the street and vacant lots. The cozy domesticity an occasional rhyming meter is disrupted by images of desolation and routine depersonalization. Okay, section two. The morning comes to consciousness of faint, stale smells of beer from sawdust trampled streets with all its muddy feet that press to early coffee stands with other masquerades that time resumes. One thinks of all the hands that are raising dingy shades in a thousand furnished rooms. The second prelude takes place in the morning, which smells and looks disgusting. City dwellers are reduced to the symbols of their work, feet and hands moving in repetition. They act as if in a play with only the pretense of meaning, and their lives are all the same. Okay, no lack of or no individuality to speak of. Section three, you tossed a blanket from the bed. You lay upon your back and waited. You dozed and watched the night revealing the thousand sordid images of which your soul was constituted. They flickered against the ceiling. And when all the world came back and the light crept up between the shutters and you heard the sparrows in the gutters, you had such a vision of the street, and the street hardly understands, sitting along the bed's edge where you curled the papers from your hair or clasped yellow soles of feet in the palms of both soiled hands. Okay, so section three. The third prelude introduces a character who speak who... Uh, the speaker addresses directly. She lies awake at night thinking of her debased life. Then at dawn, she experiences a consciousness of the world as she prepares for her day. Last section. The souls stretched tight across the skies that fade behind a city block or trampled by insistent feet at four or five and six o'clock and short square fingers stuffing pipes and evening newspapers and eyes, assured of certain certainties, the conscience of a blackened street, impatient to assume the world. I am moved by fancies that are curled around these images and cling, the notion of some infinitely gentle, infinitely suffering thing. Wipe your hands across your mouth and laugh. The worlds revolve like ancient women gathering fuel in vacant lots. Okay, the fourth prelude written in several written several years after the others introduces Christian imagery. Christ is the imagined in the sky, blocked by the city, and the street trod upon by pedestrians. The poem returns to the evening routines of the working class. Numbed by nicotine and news, the speaker then gets personal about his emotional experience of a religious impulse intertwined with his poetic imagination. 
Then he dismisses these fancies with an embarrassed gesture and ends with an image representing a spiritual void. Okay. And, and the end here, wipe your hands across your mouth and laugh. The worlds revolve like ancient women gathering fuel in vacant lots. Uh, an image that is, again, looking for spirituality, but in the end, uh, the last image is drudgery um, and uh, uh, work that is uh, debasing. Again, the industrialization seems to have blotted out uh, all things beautiful and spiritual um, in life. Okay, so in prelude number one, um, what is the time of year and what is the time of day? Okay, so the time of year here is the winter in the evening. Okay, the time of day is when people are returning home from work. In Prelude 2, what is taking place in a thousand furnished rooms? Okay, so city dwellers are doing their work. They are using their feet and hands. So, okay, um, raising dingy shades. Okay, all uh, just manual labor, the drudgery of everyday life. Okay, three, what did you hear in Prelude 3 when all the world came back? Okay, so this is open to interpretation. This is where the speaker is uh, addressing... Uh, the character speaker dresses directly a woman who is lying in bed awake thinking of her life and then at dawn experiences some kind of awakening as she prepares for her day. Okay, so you tossed the blanket from the bed, you lay upon your back and waited, you dozed and watched the night revealing the thousand sorted images of which your soul was constituted. They lay flickering against the ceiling and when all the world came back and the light crept up between the shutters, you heard the sparrows in the gutters. You had such a vision of the street and the street hardly understands sitting along the bed's edge where you curled the bed's edge where you curled the papers from your hair or clasped the yellow soles of feet in palms of both soiled hands. So my reading of that is that there might be some hope that this character is feeling um, awakening to maybe the prelude, the beginning of something larger than herself, perhaps a spiritual awakening, perhaps just awakening of individuality. Okay, five, to what social class do the people in preludes belong? Clearly, this is a lower uh, class of people who are uh, forced to engage in work that is dehumanizing and depersonalizing. Okay. Six, what cycle do you find in this poem? You can tell from the motifs of, for instance, like the newspapers um, going in and out that, and the day moving in and out, that the cycle is seemingly kind of an endless waking and resting, waking and resting in a life that involves a lot of um, labor and uh, not much room for spiritual growth. Okay. What is the mood of this poem? Explain. Again, that's open to your interpretation. You could see this as a poem that is um, solely about drudgery and hopelessness. But even the title says prelude, which begs the question, prelude to what? Perhaps we are all waiting for something uh, and the people in this poem are waiting for something bigger than themselves. So spiritual in nature or meaningful in nature. Maybe even the title tells us that what seems the darkest might be before the dawn. Okay. All right, guys. So that's it for preludes for your review. Um, so uh, please fill out your study guide and make sure that you submit it to the inbox. Thank you.